General Foods Corporation, in a continuing effort to inform the public on important issues, brings you this program as a public service. communist killers, and he has indeed violated the Constitution. So we would ask, O oh God, tonight that this campaign would have thy blessing insofar as it follows scriptural principles. We ask thy blessing upon Mr. Wallace. He might be able to refute the gainsayers and the false political prophets of our land. We ask thy blessing upon all faithful men and women who will stand for God and country as we have gathered here tonight, we ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody said this was in Wallace country, but they don't know what they're talking about, do they? No. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want the next president of the United States? You know, not long ago, the New York Times editor, not the editor, but a writer was in my office, and he said, Governor, are you, have you changed? I said, well, we all change because we live in a time of change. But basically, I am the same as I've always been, but in the past, you didn't pay attention to what I said, and the politicians haven't paid attention to what the average man has said, but he certainly is paying attention since down in Florida, and he's going to pay more attention after April 4th here in Milwaukee. We had such a big crowd that they had to lock the doors before a lot of people could... Uh, could well, so that was for security reasons. Hmm. For security reasons. They didn't want anyone up in that balcony. Well, I know that. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, other than the balcony, we didn't have enough people to... Uh, did enough room, so I had to close the doors. See, we turned away people last night. We you know that? Six, seven hundred people at the door. They were turned away. Yeah. See, there was a big bunch waiting at the motel. When I got down, it had, had Wallace thing. They couldn't get in, you know. The only way you're going to ever get bureaucracy under control is an awakening of the people because it's so strongly entrenched that it's going to take some jolt from the average citizen to let them know. And that's the reason the jolt in Florida was so terrific, not only to the party, but to the columnists and to the newspapers over the country. But I tell you, it's a sin and a disgrace. The amount of your money goes to the administration of the affairs in Washington, and you're paying for it. We used to talk about if you took those folks briefcases and open them, half of them wouldn't have anything in them, as I said, in Milwaukee, but a peanut butter sandwich, because that's about all they'd have in them. They don't... Good evening. 
Evening, everyone. I'm Stanley Siegel. Our live guest tonight is George C. Wallace of Alabama. Meanwhile, out in California, Angela Davis began her trial today. Details next on TV 11 News. Both tonight and tomorrow night for the 20s. High tomorrow and Wednesday, mid-30s. East and northeast winds tonight, 8 to 16 miles per hour. East winds tomorrow, 10 to 20 miles per hour. James Undercover, the president of the Wisconsin Power and Light Company says there could be electrical problems in Wisconsin this summer. This elitist, sophisticated crowd who knows more about what we ought to do with our lives and our children and our money ourselves, they are asking some fellow with a pointed head who can't park a bicycle straight and I'm fed up with those folks writing my guidelines. I was driving through a campus one time and I saw a fellow riding a bicycle with a tam and with a pipe and with a leg band, and I said, I bet you he's not for me. <laughs> and we checked, and he said, no, he's not for wife. And ever since then, I said, a fellow rides up. He looked like he couldn't park it straight, but he writing guidelines for uh, dairy farmers, for school busing. I bet he's wrote half the tax laws in this country. <laughs> They're going to say everything they can say evil about me in the next week or so. But they are not trying to get rid of George Wallace. They're trying to get rid of you. I'm only one individual. And one individual is nothing in this political order of ours. But the people of my state gave me the forum of the governorship. People just like you. And therefore, I speak for you. And when they try to get rid of me, they're trying to get rid of you. And I know that you're going to, in the next week or 10 days until April the 4th, realize that what they say is what they feel themselves and is not necessarily true because you can look for more of the establishment crowd whether it be labor or government or the democratic party or politicians in the next week or so to try to destroy this movement that's evident is so strong here in the city of milwaukee in the state of wisconsin but don't you let them do it don't you let them do it my friend in 1972 is not another political victory for Ed Muskie of Maine, but a victory for the people of our country. You have the power to turn this country around. You can control the giant corporations. And you can close the tax loopholes. And you can lower the property taxes. And you can demand economic justice for every American, rich and poor and in between. And you can do all these things by electing a president who will stand up to the special interests and fight for the public interest. And that's the kind of a president I intend to be. The Social Security tax is, uh, is unfair in two respects. One, it takes no account of the number of dependents that a wage earner has. Secondly, uh, the taxable earned income is has a ceiling on it now. What is it, $9,000 now? $9,000. $9,000. What is your uh, major issue, the one you're, you're basing your campaign on? Is it uh, basically the environment or uh, just, as you said, the uh, basic stand toward a better direction for America? But well, I think that they are four. I don't think there's a single one, although they're all related. And of course, they, you can build on these in many directions. But the basic four, that, as I see them, are one to end the war, clearly, finally, definitely, to end our involvement. <laughs> the 
Second, to revitalize our economy. Thirdly, I think the question that troubles people greatly is the question of fairness. Fairness with respect to tax policy at all levels of government. Fairness with which, in the way with which the problems of our people are dealt with by the government. I think the ITT case, for example, is an illustration not only of the potential of corruption of governmental institutions, but of basically the unfairness of the system in dealing with the problems of, of big interests as against those of the average citizen. And then finally, the, third area, the fourth area that I found of principal concern to Americans is the, prob uh, the problems related to the concentration of power in government and in the economy. From this car back. Yeah, we can't get any closer than this. How about on the other side? So you're going to have to get, no, you're too much traffic over there. You're going to get problems. You'd be better back from that car back, I think, you know? We have to get behind that post there. In other yeah, words. right from the post there back, huh? That'll get you. Can in. we walk out on the lawn here? That's that's Ellis Chalmers property. I have no control. Hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you? President UAW. How are you? President UAW. Do you have any, uh, what, what differentiates him from Humphrey in your view as a union leader? Well, I, when I endorse the. <laughs> When I endorse the senator. Which was the National Press Club. I said, George McGovern is close to us programmatically, and Hubert Humphrey's been our friend down through the years, and I could. How are President Woodcock? UAW. It's almost like your picture. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I got to shake my. I'm, <laughs> my money. Okay, okay, how do you do? Okay, good. Hi, how are you? But uh, I just think he can most readily unite the party, which is the important it's, thing. It's not a, a difference of ideology among the other candidates. You, just, you think this no, is no, not no, what no. it takes to pull the party together? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Muskie. Say hello to Senator Muskie. My politics of 72 is the politics of decency and opportunity and hope. We have it within our means to achieve a miracle. And that's the miracle I want to help contribute to realizing for our people. High sounding, is there any other way? If there is, you find it. I don't want it. Thank you very much. running because I think I know something about what the ordinary citizen is hung up on. This ordinary fellow who's now turning uh, to any person who will tell him that it's somebody else's fault. It's them. It's the people who are taxing you too much. It's those people who are moving into the neighborhood. We'll listen to that because he's scared. And fear is a terrible thing when you see it at work in the streets or in a neighborhood. And what Nixon has done to set the stage for this kind of spread of fear is, is infamous. It, it leaves us no time to recover. It's almost impossible to give 100% protection out of the neighborhoods and out of the streets. We declined to ask for it. Uh, you know, the next thing to do is they'll have uh, politicians cruising the country in tanks. It's not my style. I, I walk the streets of New York uh, all the time, and I have uh, one New York City police officer with me to uh, just mainly to 
uh, free me of a crackpot if he comes by. Glad to see you. Thanks for coming out today. See me. Good afternoon to you. How are you? What kind of a country do we look like with uh, politicians wandering around with 25 armed guards around them? How does that look to people all over the world? I just can't see it, and uh, it's not the way I want to live. In my judgment, uh, the country is in trouble. I think, the, I think the disastrous economic policy of the country and of the Nixon administration is producing more joblessness, more fear, more division, more bitterness, more polarization than any time that I can remember in the 15 years that I have been in elected office. I don't think that there is much time to wait. I ask your help, I hope on April 4, that you'll vote for me, because I mean business. If I'm elected president, I'll be back in the streets and neighborhoods where I began, and I'm going to change this country the way it ought to be changed. Thank you. I wish you good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you you got to get rid of Nixon, no matter how the hell it goes. <laughs> right, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Thanks. We can't have a repetition of 1968, Humphrey versus Nixon versus Wallace. What do you want to do, bore the country to death with this kind of thing? That's no way to go. That's no way to live. So it's time for change. What you said to me on the sidewalk was, uh, missing because I phoned this in. Oh, I know. I said, you know, that we had heard, as indeed we had, that if you, you did, that you, that members of your staff and members of the Muskie staff had discussed the proposition that if you did badly in, in Wisconsin and pulled out afterwards and you would endorse Muskie, and you said, absolutely not, absolutely not, I'm going all the way through, there's no way, uh, it obviously didn't come from my staff, uh, it uh, must have been leaked by Muskie's people, I'm going... Okay, well, I'll stand on it. That's what I said. I'll stand on it. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. I don't think it helps Muskie to do it if his people did it. If it didn't come from Muskie. I have reason to believe that it came from the Muskie staff. Okay. Well, however, I don't think it helps Muskie, but it's obviously not designed to help me. It may sound uh, trite, but I believe in it. I, I believe that Americans will want to do what's right. I believe that Americans, even those hard-pressed people who remain in our central city areas, will want to do what's right with their neighbors and with all people, that they will commit themselves to principles of justice and decency, that they'll stand for equality and peace and the sanctity of human life and the respect of the human condition and the improvement of the human condition. But they're only going to do it if we have some moral leadership coming out of the presidency of the United States. Thank you.
boils down to one simple thing. This administration knows who its friends are. This administration is not just pro-business. That would be fine with me. But it is pro-international finance, pro-conglomerate, pro-merger, pro-giant corporation, anti-people. The fact of the matter is that the price control is a sham and a hoax and a fraud. And no wonder people are upset. I didn't put this pin on just, you know, because I had a hole up here in my shirt or something. Somebody put that on when I came in. It may not be too sophisticated, but what it really says is that we're going to serve an eviction notice on the man that occupies the White House. That's all it says. This country needs a can-do president, not a can't-do fellow. And I'm the can-do kind. Due to the snow, uh, we understand that the information we have is that the uh, airports at Beloit and Janesville are below minimums. Uh, Madison is also unavailable to us. Uh, Milwaukee Airport is still open, and we're proceeding there now. We will try to keep as much as possible of the original schedule uh, by ground transportation. Sit down, please, as quickly as you can. The uh, advance office in Milwaukee is working to put this together, and as soon as we get to Milwaukee, uh, we'll have you know further information for you. Great. Okay, thank you so much, Lawrence. Bye. -bye. Yeah, uh, are you going to drive Joe out to the airport? Yeah. Okay, yeah, he'll be, he'll be down in just a few minutes. Why don't you sit down and have a seat and have some coffee or something? The uh, whole financing of public services is out of date. We're relying on federal congressional appropriations. You can't do that. That's why people get angry, because it, then it does become political. It ought to be banked. It is snowed out here, change of schedule, notifying the press. We're okay. right, Bob. Are you cutting that release on Nestogen? Slowly. Oh, no, <laughs> Ari, yeah. write this stuff down and then make sure that it's in here. Write it right on here. What do you want? Would you make sure that that release, don't type any more, Gary. Somewhere right, on it implies or says for a fact that Nestogen was the chairman of the Wisconsin <laughs> Kennedy Johnson <laughs> campaign. I'm sure you, I know I saw it in the undersecretary of HEW. I took your list. Uh, I want to use, I think Barbara's used it in that line in there, the only one capable of beating Nixon. And I know I've used my able qualified experience line. We can change these tax laws, but you can't do it if you don't have a president with the guts to fight for it. You can't do it if he's already palsy wellsy with the boys that don't want the tax laws changed. You need a president that comes from the people. You need one that's been with the labor movement, John. You need one that's walked out in those prairies and out in these fields with the farmers. You need one that's been a school teacher with the kids. You need one that was born above a drugstore and raised inside of one. You need one that understands what it means to suffer and what, it's, what it means to have a chance in life. And I'm going to ask you to go out there now and on April 4th to give me your support. I want to win in this state. And if I win in this state, you can do for me what you did for John Kennedy. Wisconsin gave John Kennedy the impetus to put him in the White House. Wisconsin can give Hubert Humphrey exactly the same thing. Thank you very much.
General Foods Corporation, in a continuing effort to inform the public on important issues, has presented this program as a public service. <laughs>